bestbookbits.com bring you the summary of How to Be Rich by Paul Getty. There are plenty of books on making money by men who haven't made much. But if J. Paul Getty, who Fortune magazine called the richest man in the world, doesn't know how, who does? Here, the billionaire businessman discloses the secrets of his success and provided the blueprint for those who want to follow in his footsteps. And he goes beyond the matter of making money to the question of what to do with it. This summary will help you learn the principles John Getty used to become a billionaire, what 10 rules he used to build a profitable business, and how to be a sound leader and executive. Takeaways. In 1915, Getty bought his first oil well. He then sold its lease for $15,000. He, along with his father, created the Getty Oil Company. This was the year 1916. Getty got 30% of the stock. Getty became a millionaire by the age of 24, and he was ready to retire that time. Fortune magazine named him the richest person in the US in 1957. By then, he was a billionaire. As per Getty, true richness is lasting and helps society. He never had issues with labor unions because he knew the rights to collective bargaining. He thought that unions help increase living standards. Getty found that executives are mainly worried about keeping their jobs. They don't focus on the amount of work they do. Every month, he got at least 3,000 letters. Some of these asked for jobs, some requested money, while some were marriage proposals. People are having a millionaire mindset are knowledgeable, smart, and intelligent. Great executives are creative, loyal, efficient, and problem solvers. How to be rich summary. Building the business. John Getty first found oil in Oklahoma in the year 1916. He was very excited about the likely strike Hence, John went to Tulsa to wait for any updates. He didn't want his excitement to make him a barrier for his drilling staff. Phones were not present at the time. Hence, he had to wait for his friend to come up with the news by train. Getty's first well was giving 30 barrels of oil per hour. Thus, his entry into the oil business was an instant hit. His father, also a lawyer, was into the oil business during the 1903. He had a skill of discovering oil. He found oil in 42 wells out of 43 he drilled. His son worked in those fields for two years. Later in 1914, he also came into the oil business full time. In 1915, Junior Getty made a partnership with his dad. As per this arrangement, Junior Getty searched for the oil, and in return, he got 30% of the profits. Later when they created their company, he got 30% of the stock. He continued to search for oil and worked in the oil fields as a geologist. Besides, he also worked as a roustabout and an expert in explosives. Junior Getty bought and sold leases. He even went through scientific reports, but as per him, his success for sheer luck. The Young Millionaire Getty became a millionaire by the age of 24. He enjoyed his life as a young, carefree millionaire in LA during World War I. He wished to retire, but his parents tried to convince him to stay productive. This was because many people's lives depended on the company. Hence, in 1919, he again entered the oil business. This time, he started drilling in South California. He worked with his crew, motivating them. But due to the depression, the firm's stock fell too much. In 1930, after his father's death, Getty started controlling the estate. He also ran the oil company side by side and searched for oil. Getty began buying big oil firms in South California. And in 1932, he purchased the Tidewater Associated Oil Company. This was not a friendly merger and hence took 20 years to finish. Getty was the head of the Mission Corporation in the late 1930s. He bought the Hotel Pierre for $2.3 million. Besides, he also bought a hotel in Mexico. Getty even wanted to enlist for World War II, but he was too old for that. He learned that his aircraft firm was key to the war effort. Hence, he started to manage the operations. He increased production and stayed at the factory until the war got over. This was the time when he expanded in the Middle East for the oil business. His oil field in Saudi Arabia produced 13 million barrels. By 1954, he had his fleet of oil tankers. Get his lessons about making a million. Ordinary people can also become rich. All they need is enough desire, energy, and creativity. People who cry over a lack of business prospects are just making excuses. Their reasons vary from high taxes, unfair competition through to high cost of labor. But if you pay for your staff more, they can purchase more. Plus, no business ever ended only due to high taxes. 
Besides, if you face high competition, use it to your advantage. Rather than taking such steps, many people give up before even starting. It's because fear and defeat prevent them from seeing opportunities. Some of the most significant opportunities lie in global trade. Russia and other countries in the earlier Iron Curtain want American goods. US products are a symbol of high living around the world. It's because they're a sign of the American way of life. But import tariffs hurt US firms. Hence, the governments must influence other governments to decrease or remove these duties. There's one more complaint. It's that American companies can't fight with the low production cost of other nations. Still, businessmen who are creative find means to reduce cost. Hence, the answer is to find methods to enhance efficiency. Getty's golden rules to make money. Number one, go into businesses you know and understand. Two, focus on producing enormous amounts of goods, products, and services. Number three, be economical first, then think of making money. Number four, don't ignore new chances of expansion. They can be anywhere, but check properly and don't fall prey to the urge to overexpand. Number five, delegate jobs in your business, but always be responsible for overseeing your workers. Six, reduce cost and improve productivity. This should be the same in both good and bad times. 7. Take risks and be ready to use borrowed funds, but always pay back the loans fast. This will help improve your credit rating. 8. Always be on the lookout for new markets and opportunities. And 9. Take pride in what you do. Keep a flexible service policy and solve consumer issues fast. And 10. Wealth comes with responsibility. Hence, use your money to help others. These may also include your workers and shareholders. Luck, work, and knowledge. Types of people. A millionaire mindset needs hard work, knowledge, and focus. People are of four main categories, but not each of them has the traits to become wealthy. Number one, people who don't want to work for anyone. These people are independent. For them, controlling their own lives is more critical than a paycheck. Number two, people who want to work for others and share in the profits. This feature is most common in best sales professionals. Number three, people who are happy to work for others. These people want the safety of a paycheck, but they don't have the confidence and drive to work independently or even on commission. And number four, salaried employees who don't want to help employers make a profit. Such people don't do much work and they don't even add value to free enterprise. The millionaire mindset. This mindset focuses on efficiency, profit motive and cost awareness. In other words, this means having an eye for detail while saving and making money. Pushing inefficient people into retirement is sensible because keeping them in your firm will be more costly. The executive way. Good executives are great at directing the activities of their staff. They're loyal, productive, and can solve issues fast. These people are creative and independent thinkers. They don't micromanage, follow directions blindly, or use too much oversight. Instead, they lead by example. Plus, they can both explain and instruct what is needed. Besides, they're also accountable for the work of their subordinates. Hence, if it's good or bad, they take the blame if their supervision was inadequate. Great executives don't ask others to do things they wouldn't do themselves. They praise their people publicly, but they never lash out them in front of others. Getty was an oil searcher for a long time. Hence, he knew his presence was vital in the oil field. Therefore, he avoided having an office, thereby preventing unwanted cost. But in contrast, today's companies have too many unnecessary expenses. Getty was proud to be efficient. His Middle East oil unit just had an admin staff of 50. Besides, his oil tank farm and refinery in Italy only had 15 workers. Don't stress about the wrong things. Getty said that many executives are stressed. The reason is not they are worried about the amount of work. Instead, they emphasize keeping their jobs. As a boss, he saw stressing about job and overwork as a weakness. Hence, he suggested the use of positive mindset to handle tough employees. He led by example as he was always a hands-on manager. His beliefs were not to push employees to become efficient. Instead, to guide them for the same. He said that mutual respect and trust are the base for productive communication. It's because negativity is harmful. When people see that their contributions don't matter, they disconnect. They may even become aggressive and steal things. And for them, such acts are justified as the firm 
distance them. But when people turn negative, management puts more boundaries. This in turn further distances people. Facing challenges. In his labor negotiations, Getty avoids roundabout bargain. He didn't delegate. Instead, he directly spoke with union leaders. He told directly that their demands were very high. Plus, he showed the company's reports stating that real state of affairs. Getty gave evidence to back his claims. This unarmed union leaders who finally accepted his original offer. When a company's profits increased in a year, Getty increased wages. Getty said that labor unions like honesty and straight answers. Once they had the facts, they make sound decisions. Getty knew the rights of the collective bargain. Plus, he praised how unions increased staff's living standards. Hence, he never faced issues with unions. These did mean that negotiations were around better working conditions and higher wages. But for Getty, these demands were reasonable. He understood that employees are like consumers. Hence, the more income they had, the better it was for the nation's economy. Great managers face tough situations head on. American business history has many such turnaround stories where executives faced adversity, but then revived their firms. Such stories include the Ford Motor Corporation, Valley National Bank, American Motors, and United Fruit Co. In every case, when issues came, managers didn't run away. Instead, they analyzed the situation and created a plan. And if they wanted more time, they took it. But they didn't panic. Plus, some of these firm managers also had to make sacrifices. This was important to remain in the fight. But in the end, they emerged victoriously. Art and fan mail. Getty had a considerable interest in collecting art. Plus, he saw great art as a sound investment. For example, he bought the Artabil Persian rug. This was one of the two best carpets in the Western world. Getty bought it for $68,000 in 1938. Then in 1958, Getty gifted it to the LA County Museum of Art. At the time, the value of the rug was $1 million. Getty had five marriages and said that none of his marriages worked. His four sons also joined the oil business. They first worked in the firm's gas stations, changing tires and oils. Getty got around 3,000 letters monthly from strangers. They were mainly requests for money, asked for jobs or marriage proposals. Despite being a billionaire, Getty said that true richness is something different. It comes when people do what they like and follow lasting values. As per him, status seekers were very materialistic. For these people, status and financial freedom were the same. But for Getty, true wealth was following principles and doing something good for the society. How to be rich quotes, I was lucky, very lucky. It was all a supremely thrilling gamble for staggering stakes and I plunged into the whirl, hopefully. For today's alert, ambitious and able young men, all that glitters truly can be gold. To be truly rich, regardless of his fortune or lack of it, a man must live by his own values. A man must live by his own values. After all, richness is at least as much a matter of character, of philosophy, outlook and attitude as it is of money. I am of the opinion that the brightest horizons of the American businesses are to be found outside the United States in international trade. Business management may be briefly defined as the art of directing human activities so as to carry out a firm's policies and achieve its goals. It doesn't make much difference how much other knowledge or experience an executive possesses. If he is unable to achieve results through people, he is worthless as an executive. It all adds up to this. The worker is not a brute animal or a robot that can only respond to a command. Workers at all levels are thinking, feeling human beings. The best boss is one who knows the business better than I do, but trust me enough, even though he never lets me forget that he's the boss, an old time rigger once told me. The millionaire mentality is not, and in this day and age cannot be, merely an accumulative mentality. Not even an 180 IQ will necessarily make an individual a good businessman or executive. And last, the door to the American Millionaires Club is not locked. The door is not locked to be a millionaire. And that's a wrap on the book summary on how to be rich by Paul Getty. If you want to listen to over 500 audiobook summaries, check us out on Spotify, Google Podcast, and Apple Podcast. If you're into the video book summary, check us out on YouTube at Best Book Bits. Subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and you can watch over 500 video book summaries. If you're into the written book summary, check out our website, bestbookbits.com, where you can read over 500 written book summaries. 
If you want to join a book club, we run a free book club at bestbookbits.com forward slash book club, where you can join the tribe, read more books, make new friends, get access to authors, become a part of a community of book lovers, join a mastermind of readers, thinkers, and doers. Check us out and join the club for free. If you want to be updated with the latest book summaries, we do an email newsletter weekly where you can join for free using the link below in the comments. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something out of this. Go out there and become rich by Paul J. Getty. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye now.